Good afternoon, my name is Julian Benoit. I am a paleontologist at the Evolutionary Studies Institute of the University of the Witwatersrand. And uh, today I'm going to present on behalf of my student Florian Bouabdela uh, his project on the maxillary canal and uh, trigeminal nerve of Tyrannosaurus rex. So first, let's introduce Tyrannosaurus rex. I don't think I need to introduce it too much. It's the best studied dinosaur in the world. We know almost everything we can possibly know about it, from its growth to its sexual dimorphism, its paleobiology. Uh, but there is one thing that we don't know about Tyrannosaurus rex, and it's how much flesh did it add on its face. Uh, here you can see the two competing hypotheses. One that uh, that uh, represents Tyrannosaurus rex without lips, and one that represents Tyrannosaurus rex with lips. Uh, and these lips uh, are hypothesized on the basis of modern lizards, uh, such as uh, the Varanus, so the monitor lizards, that do have lips that cover their teeth. Uh, and whether you are aware of that debate or, or not, you've been exposed to it through the movies uh, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, in which the big dinosaurs are represented without lips because it gives them uh, a more scary face, a more scary uh, looking face. And uh, the, the small dinosaurs, the one deemed intelligent, are represented with lips because it makes them look more like mammals. Anyway, those lips, uh, if they were there, were probably not mobile uh, as in mammals. It, they were just a curtain of scales covering and protecting the teeth. And uh, the cent at the center of that debate, you have, of course, the teeth, but also you have this foramina, so the, these tiny holes that you can see here along the tooth row in Tyrannosaurus rex. So these tiny holes, which are called foramina, uh, are in the center of that, uh, of that debate. They are based on modern reptiles for the trigeminal nerve. So the, the trigeminal nerve, which gives the sensitivity to its face and that runs through a canal calls, that is called the maxillary canal. And there is the same in the mandibule called the, mandi the, the mandibular canal. And based on this anatomy, on the anatomy of these, uh, of these tiny foramina, there have been many, many, many interpretations. So in therapsids, for example, we interpret those foramina, uh, or at least many people interpret these foramina as the rooting point of whiskers. Uh, not everybody agrees on that, but that's, uh, that's the most widespread hypothesis. Meanwhile, in uh, lizards, the same foramina as interpreted as supporting lips. And meanwhile, in crocodiles, the same foramina are supporting no lips. <laughs> they are supporting uh, a scaly face uh, without any lips. So we, you have the same anatomy supporting three different hypotheses. And uh, Florian, uh, Florian's project was to study the skull of Tyrannosaurus rex using CT scanning. So the, the skull was scanned in year 2000 by Brochu, who pu published it and made the scan accessible in 2003. Uh, it was scanned uh, in the Boeing facility in a, in a CT scan that, that is meant to scan airplane, uh, airplane parts, uh, because that's the only one that are big enough to fit a Tyrannosaurus skull and uh, he reconstructed the anatomy of the trigeminal canals in order to uh, bring new clues to the debate over the, the facial sensitivity of Tyrannosaurus rex and the facial tissue of Tyrannosaurus rex. He also tackled the question whether Tyrannosaurus rex had or not uh, a venomous bite. And uh, we know from modern species and from studies that were made in Euchambersia that a venomous bite doesn't go alone, it goes with uh, some osteological clues, for example, uh, maxillary fossa, so those big holes in the face that accommodate that big blue thing that we think that represents uh, a venomous gland, and this venomous gland would have been connected with uh, canals located inside the maxilla, represented there in green and in red, and so these canals would have carried the venom to the mouth, to the canines, so that the venom can be ejected. So 
uh, you have an osteological correlate or you have a dental correlate, so correlates on the teeth and here represented by the groove that you see in modern snakes. So in modern snakes, there's no sign of the, of the, the venomous gland on the face, but you can see that the animal was venomous because you have that groove on the tooth that is connected to the venomous gland and meant to inject the venom like a needle. So you have these osteological correlates that indicate venomous, uh, venomous capabilities in extinct species. Tyrannosaurus rex has none of them. So Tyrannosaurus rex, as far as we know, was not a venomous animal. Now next, Florian reconstructed all those uh, beautiful canals that you can see here represented on the snout of Tyrannosaurus. So here on top you have the canal for the ophthalmic nerve, uh, ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, I mean, uh, and accompanying vessel. So we call it the ophthalmic canals. Uh, here you have the maxillary branch the canals for the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, so call it, we call it the maxillary canal. And here you have the uh, canals for the mandibular branch of the maxillary of the trigeminal nerve, so we call it the mandibular canal in green. Uh, and here you can see the, that these canals are extremely uh, forms a very dense network with uh, anastomosis, so with uh, connections between the, the canals. Um, and uh, this dense network is also uh, quite complex in morphology. So if we compare it to birds, what's interesting is to note that birds have an ophthalmic branch and a mandibular branch, but they don't have a maxillary branch. And it's because the beak is formed mostly by the premaxilla, the bone that is in front of the maxilla here. Uh, and this premaxilla is mostly innervated by the ophthalmic branch. The maxilla is reduced and you can see the, the, the maxillary branch of the, of the trigeminal nerve is equally reduced uh, and has shrinked. So it's just a relictual uh, maxillary canal. So Tyrannosaurus rex is quite different from modern birds. Now when we compare it to its uh, closest extinct relatives, so birds were the extant relatives, but its extinct relatives, the theropods, then we see a lot of similarities in the maxilla noticeably uh, a long main trunk of the canal that runs far away from the tooth row and that sends long branches to connect to the foramina here by the tooth row. It's exactly what you see in Tyrannosaurus rex, a main trunk of the maxillary canal that runs upward to the tooth row and then sends branches downward to connect with the foramina that you see uh, on the actual skull. So the condition is very similar to theropods, but it's quite different from what you see in basal uh, dinosaurs like Plateosaurus. In basal dinosaurs, you have a much simpler condition in which, in which the maxillary canals run right behind the foramina. So the foramina are directly connected to the, to the maxillary canal. And that's actually the primitive condition for all reptiles uh, that we see since the Carboniferous, for example, in Orovenator. So that primitive condition was there in uh, early dinosaurs and then the theropods evolve uh, that complex condition that seems to be present only among them. We have to notice here that there is very few comparative uh, examples. So the very few species have been studied for their maxillary or mandibular or ophthalmic canals. So for now, the, that's what the, comparisons, the comparison samples indicate. It's tempting now to compare uh, Tyrannosaurus rex with a crocodile because in crocodiles we see that the, the trigeminal nerve is extremely ramified. You can see the, the, that branching pattern is extremely complex, very similar to the one you see in the maxilla and in the mandible of Tyrannosaurus. Uh, comparatively, the ophthalmic branch is a lot simpler in crocodiles than in uh, Tyrannosaurus. Uh, but for the rest, they seem to, to look quite similar for the pattern of the maxillary and mandibular uh, canals and nerve uh, as inferred from the canals. Uh, so it's tempting to make the hypothesis that Tyrannosaurus had a facial sensitivity that could be compared to that of 
uh, crocodiles. Now the thing is, crocodiles uh, indeed have a very sensitive face, and it's because they have uh, something called dome pressure receptors, uh, which are receptors. Uh, it's like mo motion uh, receptors for water. Uh, they, they they sense the changes in pressure of water, and so it indicates those predatory semi-aquatic animals that a prey is swimming nearby them. Uh, and those pressure receptors are uh, heavily, uh, heavily covering the snout of crocodiles. So now if we make the, if we compare the condition in crocodiles, so this is the, the canal that runs through the premaxilla in crocodile, and we compare it to dinosaurs. This is an aquatic dinosaur and this is a terrestrial dinosaur. You can see the aquatic dinosaur has a very dense network of canals just like the crocodiles are quite comparable to that of crocodiles so at least the aquatic dinosaurs seem to be good candidates uh, to be compared to crocodiles in terms of facial sensitivity noticeably we also find canals that are very similar uh, to crocodiles in marine reptiles such as uh, plesiosaurs but tyrannosaurus rex is a terrestrial dinosaur uh, just like uh, this one here uh, Erlikosaurus, sorry. Um, and Tyrannosaurus, you can see, has very few foramina on the top of its snout, uh, unlike crocodiles. And the, the network of canals inside its premaxilla, which is the only one we can compare to the other published dinosaurs, uh, is more comparable to the other uh, terrestrial dinosaur than to the aquatic one here, uh, Ascaraptor. So there's very little chance that Tyrannosaurus rex would have had uh, a facial sensitivity that would be comparable to that of crocodiles, unlike what has been hypothesized before. So now the question of lips uh, to, to conclude. So in reptiles, there are two branches. The one branch that has lips uh, that corresponds to the lizards, the Lepidosauria, in which the maxillary canal is very simple and, as I say, located right behind the row of foramina on top of the tooth row. And on the other uh, side of the reptilian family tree, you have the Archosauria, in which the two extant clades, the crocodiles and the birds, each have their own specialized condition, the beak on one side and the dome pressure receptors without lips on the other side. So it's quite difficult to know what was happening in Tyrannosaurus rex uh, because Everything in a, every representative of the Archosauria today is quite specialized in its own way. And it's very possible that uh, Lepidosauria evolved the lips, the, the last common ancestor of Lepidosauria evolved lips, and that Archosauria never had lips at all. Um, the problem here is to, would be to interpret once again the, anatom the anatomy in uh, Tyrannosaurus rex in comparison to that of crocodiles. Because once again, you have here the lepidosaurs that have a very simple maxillary canal compared to the very complex trigeminal nerve and maxillary canal here of Tyrannosaurus rex. So it would be tempting to say crocodiles don't have lips and have a complex maxillary canal. So uh, Tyrannosaurus rex also had uh, no lips because it has that very complex maxillary canal unlike the lepidosaurs. Um, but the thing is, I think the complexity of the maxillary canal is actually due to the uh, implantation of the teeth. In lepidosaurs, the teeth have no roots, so the maxillary canal is located right on top of them, right behind the, um, the foramina that you see here in cross-section. In archosaurs, uh, like crocodiles and tyrannosaurus, you have a very deep root, it's called the tecodont dentition, that pushed the maxillary canal upward, and so the maxillary canal has to send a long canal downwards to reach the foramina, creating that complex patterning that you see here in the snout of crocodiles and tyrannosaurus. And it's clearly visible on the CT scan section, you can see here the maxillary canal on top of the tooth root uh, here in red and same thing by the way for the mandible and uh, the mandibular canal here. So I think uh, the complexity of the maxillary canal is better interpreted as a side effect of the tooth implantation of the presence of a tooth socket particularly in those carnivores, uh, the theropods and the crocodiles. And for now it's more cautious 
to leave a question mark uh, and not interpret the maxillary the morphology of the maxillary canal too, too fast. Uh, we should uh, study more dinosaurs for that character before any conclusion. Thank you very much for your attention.